本Because I've seen her growth, like, man. That, <laughs> I'm trying to think, what was I probably about? I was I pregnant? 19. This, you want? No, you didn't have Chloe yet. You might okay. have. No, no, no. You did have Chloe. You I had just, just had, had her. Then. Was working at NRL. Let's mm -hmm. see. So yeah, that was 1920. No, okay. I would definitely say 20, maybe pushing 21. Okay. Right. So okay. here we are, 33. Ooh. And <laughs> almost 35. Oh, right. So We're going to say that because 35 is a good year. I'm blessed okay. to be able to, to say that, right? Get there because. I'm one of those people, I'm looking forward to the older ages. Like, I like gray hair. And yeah. I'm excited about like 40s. <laughs> what you say? I said it. Especially on the man. I thought that's what you said. <laughs> but you yes. <laughs> But yes, yeah, right. I would that would embrace that. Like, exactly, yeah. It's not about embracing it, and I feel like all the older women in my family aged well, right? And I mean, I, yeah, your mom acted beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Mom my mom for one, age. my grandma. I mean, I just feel like they made it to the older ages and still look like you know how old are you? You know, people are always surprised by what they would say. So I just again, like you said, I, I don't mind going. My daughter's getting older. I'm seeing myself get older than her. Like, I, I, yeah. I, you know, that'll make you that'll make you feel old. real, real humble, real like, quick. Real like, quick. Like, yes, definitely. Like watching her look me eye to eye now, like that, that's different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yes, she so, is yeah. a mom. She is a entrepreneur. <laughs> she is a realtor. She is an employee. <laughs> she is just like everything. Like y'all follow her on social media. Yes, mentally at mentally fit underscore beast. beast. Oh, yep. I, okay. You yeah, do you exactly remember the underscore. You do that. You <laughs> tell them what it is. So uh, the first one is mentally fit underscore beast, and then my real estate page is Cass underscore the realtor. Um, and then my private page, I mean my personal page, but I guess it'll probably be public soon anyway, um, is young, Y-U-N-G, W-I-L-D, I think, underscore free, <laughs> but don't quote me on that one, because I don't get on that much. I definitely try to stay more on, like, the messy fit page or definitely with real estate more now. Okay. Well, yes. That's how y'all <laughs> get to her. Y'all yeah. make sure y'all do that. But, yes, yeah, she is all of those things and more. She A is lot. amazing. <laughs> so... I have her here today to help 
share her if she in hopes that if she shares her journey with y'all, her story, her testimony, it will help just one person. So with oh. that said, <laughs> and, and many more, yeah. but at least one. So mm -hmm. with that said, I'm going to pray um, because mm -hmm. I'm in the season of life where I'm inviting God into everything mm -hmm. that I'm doing. To. Like everything because it just, it's I owe it to him. And I know he will show up mm -hmm. and show out. So I'm going to pray. Um Heavenly Father, thank you. We just thank you for today. Thank you for everything, everything that you've done for us. Uh, I ask that you show up. And when I say show up, I ask that you show up and show out. Let this message reach one person. Let it meet, reach 20 people. Let it reach 20 million people. But regardless of how many people that it meet, reaches, Lord, let it reach who it needs to reach. Let it touch them. Lord, let them feel your presence. Let them think something different after they finish listening to this, God. So you show up, you be present. Your words, not mine. Your words, not Cassidy's. Lord, and you just be here. In your name we pray, amen. amen. All right, so let's see. <laughs> you tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I always struggle with that question because I feel like you go to the same couple of words or you kind of just describe what you do, not really who you are. Like, you know, I'm a mom, I'm, you know, I, I, you know, you name your titles or your job. But I actually had someone say something to me the other day that I feel kind of encompasses where I am in my journey, um, how they looked at me and it gave me a different perspective of myself as well. But, you know, people say that, um, you're in your cocoon and then you're going to come out as this beautiful butterfly. And mm -hmm. they say that right now, I'm nowhere near my cocoon, like in my journey, that I'm still that little caterpillar crawling on the ground oh, wow. right now, that I'm still in that process. And it really made me think like, okay, I have been saying probably for a very long time that I'm doing the work, but I didn't have God in it. And I mm. think that that was big. Like it took that step back like yeah you're right i have been going to therapy i have been reading meditating yoga you know you name it i'm trying it and it wasn't resonating nothing was really giving me what i was looking for to feel like okay this work is doing something so to hear you know i'm that caterpillar you know i, I started over like i thought i was in a cocoon but nope i wasn't <laughs> <laughs> so backtrack it i am very much an introvert but at the same time an extrovert but i think it's because i'm very uh careful with who i give my energy to mm, okay. so i'm the type of person who once i get to know you like you know i'm balling energy you know we're gonna talk all day all night i got that is true to tell you. that but, is true <laughs> that is true but everybody doesn't see that side so i have to be more comfortable being me and and that's where i feel like that's still that caterpillar trying to figure it out and i am um you know, as a mom, like you said in one of your other podcasts, that I'm learning to parent my daughter different. So I am still a person on my journey as a mom, as a girlfriend, as um, a, you know, employee, as a you know, talking to my clients, as you know, that that representative. I'm mm -hmm. all these different people, but at the same time, I'm still trying to figure out who is Cassidy, so that when <laughs> I show up to all these places, everybody is that same person. <laughs> So, again, I think God is showing me who I am mm. right now. And so when I get that question, I get stuck because I'm still letting God answer mm. that question for me right mm. now. Oh, that's deep. <laughs> that's deep. I yeah. ain't never think about it like that. Like, yep. wow. Okay, that's a good answer. Uh, I wasn't ready for that one, but that was, that was good. Like, I'm... It, it's, it's really what I'm feeling because, like you said, I'm, with tell people all these things like hey i'm cassidy i'm like um, um. you know i had these titles at the time i'm an ex-wife now but you, know, <laughs> you would have these different titles that you just blab off and it's mm. like but that's not who you are because when mm. those things are gone like i'm not a wife anymore who are you at the root of it because that's why i'm an ex-wife mm. probably at that point i came into this thing oh my god <laughs> I should say God yeah. did not want me in that situation at that time and it took me 
on the floor crying mm. to feel like, okay, I got to figure out who I am. Because Ooh. being in this situation and only having that title wasn't okay with me. And mm. that's where that journey first started. And then it just evolved. It was like, okay, wait, this goes back to childhood. You know, bigger than what I was just, oh, it's all because this, that, and third happened in my marriage and this made me this way. Like, I mm. looked for something to point the finger at. But until God started really talking and telling me, like, mm. this is not where I actually am. Yeah. Like, this is not who you're supposed to be. Like, you ain't mm. even figured out who you are to be attaching yourself to someone else and their issues and their trauma, honestly. Because if you don't take time to learn who you are, I know you ain't take the time to learn who you marry. Mm. Like, <laughs> I know that's so right. You ain't asking them them know. hard questions. Because for real, you don't want to know. Because mm. that's going to probably eat at you and your insecurities and the things you haven't healed from yet. Mm. So every day I still, I'm like, figure out who am I? What am I doing? What do I want? Like, that's, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Because I remember a time, like you said, when I met you, it was like, I'm, I'm these things. Yeah. And you were good at the things you were doing, but you were doing them because you thought it would it would make other people think that you were good. Right. And now you're learning like, no, do these things to the best of your abilities and it doesn't matter what the people think about it. Like I, I see that change in you. So I I, I commend you for that. Thank Truly. You. Definitely commend you. <laughs> okay, uh let's see. What made you wanna start like, well, I guess you answered it. That's it. <laughs> We'll we'll skip that one. Okay, okay. Um, what has been the hardest part you would say of heal, like this healing journey that you're on? Um, I would guess I have to look at a current situation in my relationship now. It feels like it's a mirror being put up to me almost. I'm mm. facing a healed person or a person who is, you know, I think he's even told me healing never stops. You know, it's something mm. you're always gonna do because you're always evolving. I think I've read a book and I wish I could think of the title, but it says every seven years you turn into something else because mm. your environment has changed. Like you, your children for one change you. You have to change the way you are um, living your life around them, the examples that you're giving them, the um, guidance that you give. So it makes you change who you are. So every seven years you change and I feel like this relationship again is putting up this mirror where I'm having to face a lot of insecurities that I was able to put on somebody else. Ooh. Like they were toxic, they were just as toxic as I was, mm -hmm. right? But in these situations, I didn't look at myself as a toxic person. I always thought I'm the healer. I got it together. I know what's going on. I'm the logical one. Where we were really just passing that trauma back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. Like I'm pointing at you, you pointing at me. Mm -hmm. Um, but until I got with someone who I feel I don't have any reason to point the finger at him because there's nothing going on. There's This is a person who's in their healing process who's doing nothing but trying to share with me things that mm. have helped them to heal. And we communicate. Um, I've never seen that. Like, I've never, and I've never seen my parents argue, but I never saw them talk about things. Like, you know, okay. I never knew what that looked mm -hmm. like. I never had a relationship where it was okay, honestly, for me to say that without they're being backlash, like, or they're being, or I'm just nitpicking, I'm mad, and, you know, I, I never had someone kind of point out to me the things that I'm doing wrong because I was always around people who were doing the same things back to me. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking, this is normal. This is how it's supposed to be. When we're happy, we're happy. But we're supposed to have these arguments. Like, this is what a relationship is. And it wasn't until I saw that person showing me, even as a parent, where I was doing something, that they mm. felt needed work. Or as you know, they talk, see me talking about my job. Oh, you're so unhappy, all you do is complain. Why don't you do something different about it? Mm -hmm. Rather than you have those people in your ear like, yeah, girl, I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. Like, that's all, okay, mm -hmm. we just gonna keep it. Back and forth, back and forth, like. We, we look for that though, because I think we like the feeling that that, that give us. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, that's not, I don't even think, it, it's good sometimes because you like praise. It's like comfort. You like yeah. it. You like you like, but too much of it, like, no. Give me accountability at some point, like, yes. because then you stuck in my growth, and then 
you allow me to stay stuck in where you're at. That because complacency kicks in quick. And I that's what people say on long-term relationships, those long-term friendships. You have those little things you're like, oh, we've been friends for however long. Yes. Like, what is that Keep person right. bringing to your, your, your relationship? Like you say, your growth. How are you helping that person? How is that person helping you? Y'all just sitting here bickering all the time, <laughs> or y'all go out as girlfriends, Miserable. or you and your, boy, your, your boyfriends, you know, y'all, y'all, my boyfriends, you know, y'all, y'all got friends, y'all Anything. go out, everybody y'all going out, and all y'all doing is arguing, y'all fighting over something, the bill, you know, whatever it be. Y'all can't ever just go out and have a good time. That's what I'm saying. And when you're so always tough. surrounded by this same circle of people, you do become complacent. Mm-hmm. You get that comfort from these people. You feel like, oh, everybody's going through it. It's okay. Like, no, it's not okay. It there are not. some very <laughs> few people out here Ooh. who will show you a whole mm-hmm. nother life. And that is what made me want to dig deeper into what I was doing. Into feeling like what I was doing initially was very surface level. Okay. I was doing these things because I was told, like, oh, you're feeling this way, go to therapy. And I'm going to therapy, but... I still have these insecurities, these fears, because I still don't want this person to judge me. Because I'm like, well, no, I've been here sometimes. And when I started to say it, I was like, well, you're going to grow that back a little bit. <laughs> it'd be too late. Yeah, it's like, it'd be, like, it'd be like, word, no, it's word diary. It's like, yo, man. Like, <laughs> and then I'm sitting over there, like, what's she about to say back to me? <laughs> and it's scary oh, to heal sometimes. Yeah. But when you have someone, again, whoever it may be like even you have been so influential in my growth and it wasn't until I stopped being scared to tell mm-hmm. you like I'm talking to her all the time but I'm not saying yeah. everything I'm telling you oh, yeah girl, I'm good this is going on because you're scared to hear what I'm gonna say yes and that's when I don't day. want that truth that I'm gonna truth. hold my friends accountable will she and I used to be scared of it I'm like Lord always keep it honest and it's like we sit in the court of bad shit like those friends again who will just sit there and let you think that everything that you're doing is okay that the mistake that the mistakes that you're making are normal like yeah it's okay to make mistakes but it's not when you keep doing it over and over and over, oh, over, over. and everybody, everybody just sitting back watching like mm, she, she did it again like, <laughs> and you then you mad because people. something whatever this person that did you always mad yeah. man because they, you feel like they always doing something exactly yeah. and i was just trying to <laughs> Like, I carried that anger with me. I was mm. projecting it on the wrong people. Mm. And so, mm. it's not even, you know, a journey of me trying to do this for this relationship. It's it's like, wow, this relationship really opened my eyes mm. to look at my other relationships differently. Mm. To look at my friendships. To look at my relationship with my parents, my daughter, like, my coworkers. Like, I'm going to work frustrated with them. Wow. Like, <laughs> well, that that computer for one. <laughs> Wanting to let all that go and then actually feeling like, okay, someone gets where I'm coming from when I communicate mm-hmm. it. But when I'm sitting over here just mad at the world, everybody looking at you like you're crazy. But if you don't talk to people or you aren't as transparent as mm-hmm. you need to be, mm-hmm. you ain't going to get nowhere. Because mm-hmm. then you tell people, oh, I'm good. And you posting all these happy selfies on Instagram. Love. And you in the room crying. <laughs> and like, I don't be on hard, but it's me. Like, you know, you doing it. But then yes. that. It don't and that's good. the thing. Have to be be scared to show, and I think even in my um my fitness journey, it started off mm-hmm. with I, I'm going to therapy. My therapist told me to do that, and then somehow my page just turned into watch me work out, and it's like I ain't talking about nothing, I ain't telling oh, nobody how to do anything, and it was God I'm like, girl, what are you doing? Like, ooh, ooh. and it was I was quiet. I I sat and I ooh. listened. And it, that, those, I feel like a lot of things like cliche, or I used to think, Ooh. cliches, I feel like, oh, I'm listening all the time. No, you're not, because he be talking. He be you just talking. be like, uh-uh, it's okay, because, <laughs> and, and you go back, you like some I asked talk. you what to do, and you be like, okay, I'm going to go do it. And you get there, and you be like. But I really think that and my mom is always telling me, let go and let go. And I'm like, I do be letting it go. And she's like, but you be putting it right back. <laughs> right. You gotta let, you literally have to let it go. 
And I heard somebody say one time, uh-huh. like, uh, not even just one person, a couple people, they be like, God talked to me like he my homeboy. Even a pastor, one of my pastors, mm-hmm. my favorite pastor, shout out to Keith Battle at Zion Church. But he said, God talked to me, he'd be like, what's up, Keith? And I didn't mm-hmm. heard people be like, God be like, just, what's up, B? Or shut the right. up. You know, like, literally. But right. the thing is, like, they understand that regardless, God is going to meet them where yeah. they're at. Right. Like, that's the dopest part about God. God like, dope. when they say God is dope, like, God literally will meet you where he's at. And he will talk to you however you need him to talk to you right. so that you can hear him. Like, he going to reach you however he needs he, you. He think you going to listen. Look, listen. Because him. that's <laughs> what I had to do. I was so busy listening to everybody else. Like, Cassidy, try this. Oh, I do this, and this works for me. And I be sitting around like, I ain't doing it. Why is that working? Like, so-and-so gets up in the morning, and they do this, this, and the third. And it wasn't until... Like you say, you got to sit and be quiet. Mm. And and I think even um, my boyfriend now, he said one thing to me that sticks. I think it was way back when I first met him. And he said, nobody sits with what you deal with but you. And I took that to also say, God is in my head too. Mm. So if I'm tired of the things that's going on in my head, and I know no, nobody else hear this, but him, mm-hmm. let me be quiet and 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 say, mm-hmm. look, all of this is going on. I'm tired of it. Like mm-hmm. that was another reason I started my journey. It was being mm-hmm. stuck in my own head, and if I couldn't verbalize it in therapy because I was too scared to be transparent or mm-hmm. I was too worried about being judged or all of these different mm-hmm. things, it's like okay, the only person in this world who ain't gonna judge you outside of yourself is the only other person who could be up in their mm-hmm. head with you, and that's God. And I sat and I started to learn how to clear, cleanse um, my chakras mm-hmm. because I got to be able to listen and letting go of that fear and that anxiety mm-hmm. because like you said, you don't ask those questions because you fear for what you're going to hear back. Mm-hmm. God mm-hmm. will tell you, let go of that man. Mm-hmm. God will mm-hmm. tell you, quit that job. And you're going to say, mm-hmm. no, God, because mm-hmm. that's what I see. And I don't, I don't think God asked you anything. <laughs> Confused, 
Like, I want to feel better. I want to do the work. Mm -hmm. But what do I do? And that's what I was making a mistake of, is starting the journey the wrong way. It was mm -hmm. not sitting and listening and saying, mm -hmm. okay, what is going to resonate with me? Because this person's found that thing, or at least it seems like mm -hmm. they found that very mm -hmm. thing. Um, and I can't mimic them because I'm not them. Ooh. Like. That's and that was hard for me too. I had that jealousy. That jealousy ties into that insecurity. Mm. I'm sitting back looking at other people. I'm comparing myself to other people. And I'm wondering why, you know, things ain't happening for me. Mm. And I don't know what that person has gone through. And that's another thing I hear people say. Oh, you don't know their struggle. You don't know their like, You don't know mine either. Like, but <laughs> it, ain't it ain't about me. Like, in, in that sense, it's not. Because they are listening at times that I probably wasn't listening. So mm -hmm. it wasn't time. I, I started, I feel like, my journey back when I first got divorced. And I mm -hmm. spent the entire time in therapy pointing a finger at my marriage, pointing <laughs> a finger at him. And the therapist would just be asking all these questions. And the minute the session wasn't going how I wanted it to go, mm -hmm. I would drop a therapist quick. Yes. I was like, okay, next. We're going to talk to somebody else because I don't like what she's talking about. And it would be like, that was God talking mm -hmm. to me. He's telling me through this person what I need to hear. Mm -hmm. And instead of hearing Cassidy, you were doing things too. You have work to do. I'm steady moving on to the next person. Like, nope, I'm good because I ain't yeah. doing that work. <laughs> and then I go and I'm like, why does that work? Why does that work? Oh, and I've heard yes. something else. You continue to either meet that same person mm -hmm. in another form or you are constantly met with those same issues or yeah. trauma um in these situations when you're not listening nope. when you're not right like you have to be ready to face that trauma because it's scary uh -huh. like that first chakra that i'm cleansing Ooh. is the root chakra and it, it is it, it stems from um fear so okay. the first thing you got to do is you got to take all that time to write out what are you fearful of what is holding okay. you back and i just ask god like whatever it is i need to get it out because if i don't ever say it how am I get past it? Ooh. Because it's me holding me back at the end of the day. I can't get out of my head. Yeah, I'm the worst enemy. You are, and it's real because you can do so much more when you have faith and mm. confidence in yourself mm. because you trust that God mm. put you here to do something, mm. and no matter what it is, you're going to get there. You're going to get mm. there whether you're going to mm. struggle to get there, mm. you're going to float when you get there because you're going to ride the wave with God. But you'll get there. It's just in how do you want to get there. And you got to be ready to do the work and face the trauma. And that was what that, like I said, I guess I said all that to say at the beginning of my relationship, it was a mirror put up to me. Even before we became anything serious, he was helping me do work. And that showed me, like, okay, God is pushing me to want this person. Trust mm -hmm. that this might not be my, you know, my end game or what have you, but that don't matter because I'm living in the moment. And this is what is mm -hmm. helping me. I'm mm -hmm. feeling better. People are seeing changes mm -hmm. in me. Changes I didn't even know I was having. You yes. know? And that's when the, the change is real. When I feel like other people see it. You're not telling people that I'm doing this and I'm doing that. You're mm -hmm. just saying, hey, if you want to try this. And I think that's where I've turned my page into as well. Is getting back to helping other people start their journey. Because okay. mm -hmm. I, I didn't want it to be very... Uh, surface level just oh it worked out and that's all that that's helping me mm -hmm. it's not it's bigger than that that's where, <laughs> that's where i'm at with this yeah like it's deeper than that show authenticity like right. that's what we're missing people are not gonna believe in god no more because the people of the church are missing authenticity like even some pastors are missing authenticity mm -hmm. like they make you believe that you got to be this perfect person and we right. know carrying that burden around of being perfect that's hard like because who wants to be perfect like that, that right. that's pressure like pressure bus pipes Okay, I'm trying to be best. Pressure like that is the like, but, but not that type. But not of that type. But you need pressure with God because right. where you are weak, God is made strong. Like He will definitely, He's always there, but He will definitely be there when you call on Him. Right. Like the more you call on God, the more He shows up. The more you can hear from Him, the more you can discern. You're hearing 